One of the major systems in satellite design is that of attitude control. Now, there are two phases of attitude control. There's attitude determination and attitude control. In this part, we're going to talk about the attitude control, and we'll talk in an upcoming lecture about attitude de determination and how they differ. But uh, for now, we're going to talk about attitude control. And that simply put is what direction are you pointing and how stable are you in that position? Now, there's a lot of things that can influence this. Really, it depends on what the mission is of your, your spacecraft. So we have a couple of different images. On the left, you can see the Hubble Deep Field image. This was an image that was taken with days of pointing at the same patch of sky with exact precision. The Hubble Space, Space Telescope is one of the most precise instruments that has ever been designed for its pointing ability, that it's able to stare at the same spot with a very, very small margin for a long extended period of time. So it requires some very, very sophisticated attitude control in order to maintain that. Now, on contrast, there might be something that you don't care nearly as much. If all your payload is is an antenna, and this is an antenna wave pattern, we can see that within three degrees, it really doesn't make that much of a difference here. So maybe you only need to point within three degrees, and there are even more generous patterns out there. If you only have a simple dipole antenna like many CubeSats will have, then you might not even care that much. You just want to make sure that you're rotating and so that you have the opportunity to talk to your spacecraft in some point in time during a pass. Now, generally speaking, there are two types of systems that can do attitude control. There's passive systems and there's active systems. The passive systems are either for if you just need some kind of a general rotation so you don't get stuck in an orientation where you can't talk to the spacecraft. And the, um, or they are designed to complement the active system to kind of reduce its, its uncertainty. So on the left, we have an example of a, a spacecraft drawn very, very simply. Basically, it had this heavy weight here at one end of the spacecraft, and it had the spacecraft body at the other end of the weight. Because of the way that gravity affects this, it will tend to pull the object in one direction or the other a little bit firmer, and even if it's a little bit off, it'll tend to pull it straight towards the center. Now, this could be stable perfectly upside down, or it could be stable the right side up, and so you have to make the the correct attitude, at least initially, in order to get it there. But once you get it there, then it will remain pointed in the right direction without any real need to control it further. In addition to that, um, if you don't really care that much about the orientation, you can just put a magnet in your spacecraft, and it will follow the magnetic lines of the Earth. And you can maintain a fairly decent uh, orientation with something like that although the magnetic sensor is not going to be field is not going to be nearly as accurate of pointing as you will have with the passive system on the left now these are obviously not going to be super sophisticated but they can do their their trick if you don't need to have super high precision accuracy these will more than do the job that they need to do there's a couple of other ways that you can maintain it. Um, on the left is a figure of something that's spinning. Now, as it's spinning there and it's moving, it's indicative of an active system with reaction wheels that we'll show a little bit more about or talk more about later. But just spinning the spacecraft and having it point in the right direction can be quite helpful, especially if that right direction is not going to move very much from time to time. Now, for an Earth orbiting spacecraft, this isn't very useful because the right direction will be towards Earth and that will change every orbit during the orbit continually. But if you have a spacecraft that's visiting another planet, especially in the deep outer solar system, then this can work quite well. The uh, Pioneer probes are spin-stabilized. 
So they just got started uh, spinning, and they're able to keep pointing towards Earth regardless of where they are, and they can make some small adjustments to that as they need to, but the spin factor is enough to save a considerable amount of fuel and to keep it pointed in the right direction. On the right, you might recognize this is one of the CubeSats that I helped develop. This is the Rincon Sat. It has a very, very primitive attitude control system, and you can kind of see it from here. You see how one of these bars is dark, and the other one is light. And you see this one is dark, and you can see this one's light. It's the same way on all of the sides, and that is actually deliberate. What this will do is use the sun to cause a gentle pushing movement to have the satellite tend to spin itself. And you can see this is just a dipole antenna. It doesn't really matter that much what direction it's pointed. It has a very, very broad width. And so because it was spinning, you're able to uh, talk to the satellite at least some of, of a particular pass. If it was pointed straight at the ends towards the ground, then you wouldn't be able to do anything. And if it was stuck in that direction, then it, you couldn't talk to the satellite at all. So this very, very gentle movement was enable enables it to uh, talk to the spacecraft no matter what's happening. So enough with the, the passive systems. Let's talk some more about the active systems. On the right, you have a example of a reaction wheel. Now, a reaction wheel is like the, the spinning disk before. And instead of the entire spacecraft spinning, though, as you would have with a spin-stabilized spacecraft, you'll have a portion of the spacecraft that's contained inside of this little thing that's spinning at a very, very high rate. Um, these are often vacuum-sealed such that they actually maintain atmosphere. You can do it without atmosphere, but it makes the, the lubrication of the flywheel much more difficult. Either way can be done. Now, these spinning wheels, basically, they can start to spin up in one direction. The spacecraft, because of conservation of momentum, will tend to spin in the opposite direction. When it's spinning in the opposite direction, then you can stop your spinning of your reaction wheel let it spin down to zero and your spacecraft will stop rotating and you've managed to point it in a different direction. Or if your spacecraft tends to rotate on its own, which it'll do because of some sunlight pressure and some other factors like that, then you can capture some of that momentum and you can keep it stable. On the left, you have a system that is quite ingenious, but it only really works for relatively small spacecraft that are orbiting the sun, or not the sun, the Earth. It would theoretically work with Jupiter, although it's never actually been used there. They're called magnetorquers. What this does is this uses the magnetic um, field of the Earth to change the orientation of the satellite. So this is just an electromagnet. You pull it one way, it'll tend to align that electromagnet with the Earth's magnetic field. And it has a fairly low pull towards it, but it will eventually get there. Now, reaction wheels have a much quicker reaction time. What they will typically do is they will spin up, and then the magnet torquer will slowly take that momentum away in the right direction until the reaction wheel is no longer spinning at all. Because as these things are spinning, they take power. And there's a limit to how fast they can can move and if you have a saturated reaction wheel then you have no more ability to control your spacecraft and that obviously is not a very good thing. Uh, there are a couple of other ways that are done. So reaction wheels or or gyroscopes which is just a, a um, improved variant of a reaction wheel a little bit more controlled that is used for the very very sensitive instruments like Hubble Space Telescope. Um, there are a couple of other ways that can also be done. Really, uh, reaction control thrusters is the, the most significant way. You can do a couple of different things with these. So this is an example from the Apollo program. What you can do is you can shoot a, a, a jet of air. It can be compressed air for what's called a cold gas system. Or you can have some kind of a system that chemically heats itself, like a monopropellant, like hydrazine, for instance. 
that can heat itself and it has a higher ISP if it's heated uh, as compared to the cold gas system. And you can orient your spacecraft in whatever way you need to. So by this means, they were able to keep the the um, lunar lander oriented in the right direction in order for it to land. Now, these are really great for systems that either don't need to be adjusting their pointing very often or, or are very short-term lived solutions. These are much, much easier to deal with than a reaction wheel or a magnet torquer system. On the flip side, they do use propellants, so there is a limit to the lifetime of how long these can actually function. And they'll usually use from the same type of propellant tank that the main thruster is using. So you don't want to use these very often, although most modern spacecraft, they're three-directional stabilized such that they can keep their pointing towards Earth or whatever direction they need to. Most deep space missions use some kind of a reaction control thruster similar to this, although perhaps not quite as fancy as, as this, as many nozzles in as many directions. And that is all that we have for attitude control. Uh, let me know whatever questions or comments you guys have about this or other space-related topics, and thank you very much for joining me. Take care until next time, and until then, keep on tracking.